Independence Day to for those of you who are in the United States of America. It's uh, it's pretty uh, fantastic uh, concept, you know, a celebration of uh, pragmatism. Oftentimes, uh, people are not really aware of what that means, but that's what we try to do here within this uh, community and ultimately uh, this podcast uh, to be able to uh, accomplish just that. So yeah, it's uh, rainy and windy, so not entirely sure what the quality of the stream is going to be, but I honestly don't care, so it is what it is. We'll just work with it. How about that? So I've come to realize that like this whole idea of uh, acceptance ends up being a huge problem for people. There's uh, extroverted acceptance and there's introverted acceptance. So the problem is, though, is that most people think introverted acceptance automatically means introverted feeling, and that's not really the case. Acceptance as a concept comes uh, from extroverted feeling. The thing is, is that oftentimes FE users, especially ones that are highly self-deprecating, do not really have the opportunity to get uh, acceptance because that deprecation in of its own right, they're really just deprecating the self. Extroverted feelers have to often learn how to uh, use their own extroverted feeling and then turn it in towards the self. They have to learn. Maybe it takes their whole life to learn, but take a very, very huge amount of effort, a lot of time, to bend that extroverted feeling towards oneself and reach a state of self-acceptance. You know, and there's a lot of people out there who have that problem where they just don't. They just don't accept themselves. I, uh, I was with a ISTP girl last night, and, uh, we were, we were talking and whatnot, and uh, she she did like uh, what she considered to be a uh, social faux pas, because uh, I also went out with my crew last night. We went to a uh, favorite bar and uh, played a lot of pool. Man, I've been sucking the last two weeks for some reason, but uh just need more practice. I think it's because... I haven't been wearing my gloves, and the Q-Sticks had way more friction on it, so I'm going to try to get that figured out. Also, having to deal with this, well, that just sucks, so, but I should only be in it for a couple more weeks, um, and that happened because, you know, had my uh, Krav Maga belt test, so, but anyway, so... This ISTP girl, she thinks she, like, committed some kind of, like, social faux pas amongst my crew and I. And we're like, no. But then, you know, you you see that deadly sin of pride. You see the TI hero. They got the expert feeling inferior. The expert feeling inferior is just afraid of not having acceptance. And the expert intuition trickster has no idea what we even mean at all. There's just no meaning whatsoever. And because of that lack of meaning, you know, like understanding what we mean or understanding what what we are intending to say to her, she's just, she just automatically assumes that we're just bullshitting her. You know, and honestly, that's like, that's really sad. Like, not, I'm not there to bullshit people. Like, I'm, I got TI parent, you know, my bro, Chad, he's with us all the time. He's an INTJ, TE parent. He ain't going to bullshit. You know, T parents in those situations, we're not bullshitting. Top of that, we're men. Men are usually way more reliable in terms of, you know, them keeping their word than women are. Not because women are liars, but it's just because they change their mind all the time, as they as they do due to, you know, they're changing hormones throughout the day, so, they're, so they change constantly. So women are in a constant state of change, so you can't really rely on what they say as much as you can rely on what they do. But, you know, this, this ISTP girl, she's 
you know, having to struggle. It's like, you know, do you guys, do you guys accept me? And it didn't matter. It didn't even matter, like, how much we said yes. It didn't matter. She's doing that whole, you know, ISTP perspective of, oh, you know, well, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. So I have to then demonstrate an act of loyalty because that's the only thing that she understands. So going out of my way to <clears throat> make sure then she's included, uh, you know, with the next round for, for playing pools or playing doubles and whatnot. And then only then did she start to believe that the uh, social faux pas wasn't a problem anymore. Wow, that sucks. Someone's keys are in the middle of the street. Oh, God. wonder what these go to. This is weird. Do they go to this car? I have no idea. That's really weird. My empty child is like, I hope they find it, you know. So I'm just going to set them on top of this vehicle. Yeah. Setting them on top of the vehicle. So there they are. Anyway, yeah, I know, right, John? Like, steal the keys. No, no thanks. Uh, so, it's only then that she, like, understands acceptance. It's funny, though, because, like, she'd make additional uh, self-deprecating comments, like, um, you know, oh, I'm really weird. And I'm like, what is up with ISTPs, especially ISTP women, saying that they're weird? Maybe it's, you know, they're pretty external because they're Templar types. And they also are pretty masculine, masculine women out there, constantly getting, you know, gaslit by society to, like, behave more feminine in a certain way. And it's just so interesting. You just look, you just look at her face, you look in her eyes, and you could just see the N.I. child just right there, that, that beating heart of N.I. child, and then that extroverted feeling inferior where it's like I'm not feminine enough so I'm not accepted enough and I'm thinking to myself well dang sounds about right but then my other friend my friend Drew he's he's an ISFJ totally dope dude you know some some ENTJ girl comes over and she wants to play pool or whatever with us. And I'm like, hey, you know, bro, it's your bronze pair and whatnot. And she was like, she was like really interested in him. She spent, you know, doing indicators of interest, spent like the majority of the time talking to him over everybody else in our crew, which is cool. And, but after doing so, like she just left because he just sat there. He didn't engage. You know, I even went up to him. I'm like, look, man, if you leave where you're sitting right now and go to her and then bring her back, you know, like that would tell her expert sensing child that you're seeking a, a shared experience with her after she's already stated that she, after, you know, basically she's spending time on you. She's in I parent. She's showing interest in you, you know, in this in this bar scene. Out of everyone else here, she picked you. And I parent picked you. You might want to pay attention to that, you know. So go over and bring her back. You know, but he didn't. And then some of the more masculine of the men at the bar ended up, uh, you know, getting a hold of that and I parent as a result, you know. But that's the thing, like, well, the wind's picking up again, but... Honestly, I don't care. That's the thing, like, and as much as that ISTP was uh, was struggling, as much as that IS no, I think I think he did. I think he did want her. Um, as much as that ISTP was struggling with like external acceptance because of how masculine she is, and she knows that you know most people, especially men, don't accept me because you know I'm super masculine. I mean, like, uh, one of us in the group actually asked her, like, hey, you know, 
if you got uh if you got any of your girlfriends you know like hey like hook a brother up you know and then she said well i don't have any female friends all my friends are men and you know as you know what we talk about in season 31 that can be a very rough uh rough thing for a woman to say you know if you want to learn more watch the season 31 playlist so yeah, that, that kind of sucks. But at the same time, if you look at it from Drew's perspective as an ISFJ, ISFJs, they're really mega feminine, mega feminine men. Now, technically on paper, INFP is the most feminine male, but colloquially, it's the ISFJ who is the most feminine. And then we see him having these struggles as well. Because, you know, ISFJs, ENTPs, INTPs, ESFJ men in some cases, but not so much ESFJs and ENTPs, but more so INTPs and ISFJs because they have introverted sensing optimistic through their child and their hero function combined with extroverted feeling pessimistic. It requires them to have a far more, a far higher amount of familiarity in order for them to be comfortable. So it takes a lot of time. But, you know, we live in a day and age or a culture where these people don't really have, um, they don't really have that opportunity to gain familiarity when it comes to, you know, sexual relationships, women or otherwise, these men, they don't because we live in an instant gratification society, social media, low attention span, blah, blah, blah. You've all heard it before. So I don't like being cliche. But the point is, is that he is also having a similar struggle and as much as she is also having that struggle. You know, it just boggles my mind, you know, how we like walk around, we live our lives, but our judgments, our judgment is stupid because we like to say, well, men all behave this way or women all behave this way. But we conveniently ignore their psyche. We conveniently ignore their personality. And I'm just like... What the hell, dude? Why are we doing that? But it happens. It happens so much. It happens all the time. And it's really frustrating. You know, I I, I just don't get it. Like, why do we actually choose to be willfully ignorant and not actually pay attention? You know? I was on uh, I was on Reddit last night, you know, and I'm reading a lot of uh, hate threads about me. Sometimes I enjoy that. Also helps me uh, give me additional ideas for content from time to time because I like content. No, well, there's that wind again. So having that, it's like okay. These people, while they're going out of the way to voice that they don't accept me at all, these people who don't accept me are also spending their time giving like this hatred, this, this attention, but they're oftentimes projecting their own lack of self-acceptance onto others. And that's one thing that I noticed. You know, look at ESTPs. ESTPs like INFJs are heavily, easily gaslit. So easily gaslit because they're both lust types. Uh, they care about intimacy and connectedness more than anybody. But they can't have that sense of belonging. They can't have that sense of intimacy with people because... You now the rain's getting a little out of control. Because, like... <laughs> they define themselves based on the experiences and their performance... And then also people valuing them and making them a priority at the same time. So whenever they're asked to be a priority for somebody else, well, it's confusing, very difficult, very uh, painful for them after a while. But here's the kicker. Let's look at their childhood. What if, as a child, they'd get beat every time if they weren't perfect? If perfection was ultimately their parents' goal when it comes to raising this ESTP. 
an EST, and, it, and what if it's an ESTP woman as well, who's like super masculine, just like the ISTP girl I was with last night. And like, when that happens, that gets, that gets it even worse, a lot worse. The reason why is because then they become subconscious focused within their INFJ subconscious, right? And then they're constantly striving to, for towards perfection. And then any time that they are not perfect in something, they feel the failure almost just as badly as an SE inferior within an INFJ would feel that failure. And then as a result, they have absolutely zero self-acceptance. And the only way they can live with themselves is by having the acceptance of other people. And then sometimes they often don't even believe that other people accept them. So they do the loyalty checks to see if those people still accept them, thinking that loyalty checks is the quickest way or the most efficient way to uh, determine whether or not, you know, those people still accept them, whether or not they still have acceptance. So they become insanely external and base their entire self-acceptance on whether or not, on whether or not uh, others accept them. This becomes a huge, huge problem. It's one of the reasons why I really enjoy the author uh, W. Anton. He wrote the book, The Manual. Most people think it's a pickup artist book, but it's actually an ESTP social skills life philosophy book, actually. Um, but like, even ESTP women, I think, should read it. Hell, I think Templar women in general should read it. But there's a particular uh, chapter that focuses on self-acceptance. And W. Anson is constantly talking about, you know, how important it is. Like, it's like, hey, if you're going to have any other person in your life, it doesn't even matter if it's like a member of the opposite sex, if you're trying to have a sexual relationship with them. It doesn't even matter if it's like a member of your family or a church, or your community, or your job, it just doesn't matter, okay? It really doesn't matter. Well, why? It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, they're not going to accept you if you can't accept yourself, which is extremely difficult for extroverted feelers to do, you know? You know, Railgun's got that problem. The uh, ISTP girl from last night uh, has got that problem. Her name's Dalia. Uh, they're like, it, it just doesn't, I mean, my, my ex-girlfriend Kim, the ENFJ, has that problem. Like all these F users, you know, uh, the F user men in my life, they also have that problem. All about acceptance. Thing is, they're not really going to get anywhere in life until they get to the point where they can actually learn how to accept themselves regardless of what others say or do. Can you do that, right? Can you do that? Can you do that as an expert feeler? You know, for me, I've had my own struggle with acceptance. You know, um, my parents, they're very uh, ignorant when it comes to food and health. And in a lot of ways, they still are actually they kind of barely changed ever since i was four years old so they've had 31 years to try to figure things out and you'd think that when your son is lying on a table dying that maybe they should make better health decisions and learn from that mistake well i almost died i got a huge scar for example from when they cut me open pulled all my guts out because I had sepsis and they're like, they're washing my, they're washing my, my guts out. I was completely emaciated, literally pulled all my bowels out of my body and I had to wash them because I had sepsis because my appendix burst and I was going to die. Well, they saved my life. I'm very thankful for that. But I got this huge scar to remind myself that, you know what? I have absolutely zero control you know, at times can have zero control over my life and the consequences that happen to me. Sometimes bad things just happen to me, no matter what. And I keep, you know, walking around with this big scar. The scar is like also like insanely embarrassing, especially like aesthetically, because like I'm walking around with like a, 
a smiley face on my belly. It's hilarious, actually. And then imagine like being like 300 pounds with that, you know, definitely destroys my own personal sense of vainglory. Definitely destroy. It makes my envy even worse. Right. But, you know, being the fat kid in school and then also like growing up pretty poor, which honestly, I didn't entirely mind being poor at all. It actually taught me some important things about life and I actually appreciate what I have, what little that I have. And uh, the point is, is, though, is that, like, do you think I was ever accepted? Do you think I was ever wanted? No. Especially since everyone is so shallow. You know, I didn't feel accepted, actually, until, like, I was 18 years old. Because, like, I remember, I remember being, like, 14. And then, like, I discovered women for, like, the first time in life. I, it started, it was, like, it was just, it was so fascinating. Like, just out of nowhere, all of a sudden, I was attracted to women. It was like, it was like within a 24 hour period. I'm just like, what? Okay, that's a thing. Why do I care so much? I was actually kind of like disgusted with myself because I'm like, why? Why do I care? Oh my God, I care. I don't want to. Oh, it's like I was having my like freedom and uh, pragmatism completely taken away <laughs> because hashtag biology. You know, so I remember being, I remember uh, going into high school orientation. I weighed myself that morning. I weighed 287 pounds, you know, already dealing with the fact that I'm not wanted. I'm not accepted, you know, like, you know, there's been examples of that. Like my dad, my mom, they'd always tell me, okay, don't embarrass us. You know, don't say that, you know, have manners, etc. But I always felt like, you know, my parents' main interest when it came to me was like, you know, whether or not like I was going to embarrass them or not, you know, I mean, my sister made it very clear to me. She's the SFJ. She's my conflict type. She made it very clear to me that, you know, how, how embarrassing I was ultimately, you know, ultimately. So like I, I go to high school orientation and then I'm 287 pounds as a 14 year old, um, which is ridiculous. And then, you know, I, I turned 15 that February, but like, and all of a sudden I've discovered women at the same time. And then it's like, wow, that's even harder when that biology kicks in because you just realize how unacceptable you are and you realize how undesirable you are simultaneously, right? And it's like, wow. And then like mentally, you know, I was spiraling. I was going back and forth between like, you know, I'll just be a hedonist because that's all there is in life. Because, you know, I, I work so hard to like lose weight. I work so hard, you know, doing all the traditional thinking, which is incorrect because no one understands, you know, glandular fattening, which I don't even know you could search it that way. But basically if you're getting fat, it's because you have an organ or two that is struggling or failing or in process of failing. And that's why ultimately you're fat. For me, it was pancreas and adrenals. Mostly adrenals, though. Adrenals are probably the majority of the problem, not so much the pancreas. Other people could be their ovaries or their thyroid or their liver. But for me, it was adrenals, primary as secondary. Pancreas, I had no idea. But I was willing to do anything. That was when, like, Atkin diet was, like, you know, super super popular and pretty cool or whatever. So I, I just, I just cut out all the sugar entirely. I cut out sugar, but I was still eating carbs like crazy, but you know, my weight started going down and I was so, I was so disgusted with myself because I knew just how disgusted with myself everyone else was constantly. And that included my attitude because like, you know, these people would beat me or they just leave me out of everything. They like I was always alone, you know, as an extrovert, especially with like extrovert feeling child. And it's really, really lame to have to get the same treatment from other ESTPs, even though ESTPs, like other FE childs, like ESTPs, even though ESTPs are probably the loneliest of all the types, other than INFJs. That's why they have the highest sexual body count out of all of the 16 types, literally for that reason. And it's like, okay. There I am, you know, getting shit on by my own people, basically, because their their own internal struggle for acceptance, because 
their struggle with acceptance basically comes from the fact that they just reject themselves entirely. They don't even allow themselves to have an identity. They, they base their identity on everybody else. And it's like, what? Basing your identity on other people, really? So, so I worked hard. I started working hard. I had this thing where, like, my dad, like, he bought me a, a gazelle, some exercise machine, every single day when I got home from school. The very first thing I would do is put the Daft Punk uh, Discovery album up, and I'd do 40 minutes, which was the entire length of that album on the gazelle every single day and then sometimes i go run two miles after that but a little did i know that all of that level of exercise is actually making me fatter by increasing my cortisol and it was actually a waste of time and i was destroying my muscle not actually burning fat like an idiot but people in those days in the early 2000s had no clue about any of that anyway Most people just give up on themselves and they find themselves 300 pounds and it's just like, dang. My dad, he got me, uh, you know, like this weird gym lifting machine thing, put it in the garage for me. I use that too. Still didn't really get anywhere. Luckily, I was in the middle of puberty, so, and I was at least active enough doing all that through puberty that slowly, you know, I did get smaller smaller which is good you know because it's like getting smaller is important because i'd rather do that instead of like you know continue to be an embarrassment to my family embarrassment to my father you know my dad like ever since i've known him he's always struggled with obesity always he's still obese now i love him though but it's interesting because like you know he would have his own self-deprecation for himself Talk about how, oh, yeah, I'm just a big galoot, as he always would tell people. You know, you do the Homer Simpson thing. And, uh, like, it's, it's a gross, it's a gross situation. And then, like, and then he would, you know, basically casually encourage, you know, other people, even at church, you know, <laughs> To, uh, you know, they'd, they'd call me Doughboy or they'd, you know, they'd poke my belly like the Pillsbury Doughboy, you know, that whole, the whole situation. So I'd have other men and my peers basically treat me like that at church on top of all the crap I had to deal with, you know, at, um, you know, at school. So the stress just got, went up and up and up and up and up. And that's one of the reasons why, like, throughout my childhood, like, I have, like, a lot of panic attacks, like, all the time. But I'd hide them. I'd hide them because, you know, SI inferior, we're afraid of being weak or, you know, or even looking weak with when you mix in our uh, vainglory uh, deadly sin, our secondary deadly sin of vainglory. And it's like, yeah, you know, I'm pretty afraid uh, of being weak right now, you know. So based on that, it's like, OK, I'm just not going to tell anyone about these panic attacks, like because like I'd stop breathing, basically, you know. I'd, I'd stop breathing and have a really hard time breathing and I'd hyperventilate and I'd go off in my own sometimes in the woods or behind the building and then just get on my hands and knees and just do everything I could to breathe or stay alive or, and survive. That's all I ever was. Everything in life for me was just survival in those days and also days after. It's always been difficult for me to get out of survival mode instead of thrival mode because my mind has invested so much in terms of ego investments, in terms of effort, neural pathways, growth, centered around survival instead of actual thrival, right? You know, it's because I, I didn't really have a support structure. It's because my parents, they're both expert feelers, they're trying to get a support structure themselves and oftentimes they project their need for a support structure on me. You know, there's uh, a, a sympathetic, uh, moral uh, support structure. You know, and I don't, I don't blame them for this. That's why it's important for families to be large, because if I actually had a brother, that'd be nice. If I actually had a brother, then, you know, maybe he would have been an FI user. Or if my parents had more children, we could have had more FI users, and then thus had more harmony within our family instead of the hell that it was growing up. You know, and it's just like, well, most people don't understand that. 
they understand that that the nuclear family where one child per adult in a nuclear family so the average size of a nuclear family is what four to five maybe three it's actually extremely detrimental to children and this is one of the reasons why that's why i hate the idea of the nuclear family i want it to die in the fire i hate it the tribal family is wiser so but the point is is that like insecure being weak hiding my my uh my anxiety constantly I didn't even know I had anxiety. I had no clue. I was just, there was hyperventilating in secret, trying to keep it together and just keep going, you know. But I knew, TI parent knew, I ain't wanted, I ain't accepted. And I knew that the only way that I was going to be those things is if I put in more effort. The problem is when you're an SI inferior, you end up putting your effort in the wrong things. So I ended up making my situation worse with the amount of exercise, I ended up getting more weight. And then I just gave up. It's funny, I gave up and I started losing more after I gave up. But by the time I was 18, I was 185 pounds instead of 300 pounds. But even 185 is still technically obese at my height, um, which is a problem. That was still a problem, but I was a lot better than I was. And like... You know, some INTJ girl noticed me, and we got together, and it was great. And then we saw Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith together. That was good times. It's like one of my best memories. Um, did prom, you know. Of course, then, like, she was gaslit into breaking up with me because she had a secret, which was like, oh, you know, I have brain cancer. I'm not going to tell you, though. And then she died. That was really sad. Didn't even find out that she died until years later. But the point is, is that, like, yeah, that sucked. And, like, the, the one person that actually wanted me, the one person that actually made me a priority, the one person that accepted me, she was gone. She was straight up gone, you know? If you ever see that movie, A Walk to Remember? Yeah. I'm basically Landon in that story. Literally. Although... Let's be straight. I'm not exactly a fan of Mandy Moore. So, you know, regardless of these struggles, though, like, thank God, at least that I have introverted sensing. Because, like, I can remember where I've been. I can remember everything that I've been through. And I could always build upon that experience. But Templars, they're so external, they don't have that. They don't have that introverted sensing that they can rely on, except for maybe ISTPs, maybe eventually ESTPs, STPs might, but NFJs, they sure as hell don't. And it's even harder. So I think it's hardest for the INFJ out of all the 16 types when it comes to the struggle for acceptance, especially with that, like, FI critic, you know what I'm saying? FI critic constantly devaluing their sense of self-worth on a, on a regular basis. But at least I had that infrared sensing. At least I could compensate with trying to figure out how to solve my problems and just have the self-discipline to just never stop. But here's the, here's the kicker, folks. Here's the whole point. How is that even possible? How is that even possible without first actually accepting myself? Which, I wouldn't even know that I accepted myself because I had FI trickster. So I'm unaware of my own self-worth. Also unaware of what things are valuable to me. I just knew I wanted to be accepted. I knew I wanted to be wanted, so I worked hard for it. I just compensate by putting in more effort. Doing the Ryan Reynolds Deadpool thing. Hashtag maximum effort, right? To get to where I'm going. But when it comes to acceptance, like, in order for me to, like, just keep going, have that discipline, I would have to actually accept myself. Because then you just get to a point in your life where you realize, you know, especially as a man, you know, doing that. And this is basically my rite of passage is that no one really gives a shit about you. You don't actually have any valuable so value. Society sees you as disposable. And women are so entitled and so enabled by society 
that only two out of 10 men are actually getting laid anyway. And they don't really want, and they're all competing for the same 20% of men. It's hilarious. They're all competing for those guys while the rest of us are out in the cold, you know. But it's all about reaching that level of self-acceptance. Because here's the, here's the reality. No one will ever accept you unless you're willing to accept yourself. If you're like acting like you got some like self-deprecating behavior or whatever, if you'd be like Aaliyah, the ICP girl from last night, you know, uh, or if you're going to be like the ISFJ, no one is going to accept you unless you accept yourself. You know, you just got to get to a point where you realize you don't have anything to lose. You know, like, you know, there's, especially like when you look at INFJs, ISTPs, ESTPs, and they get like suicidal, you know, and when they get suicidal, it's all about, you know, they can't accept themselves because they see themselves these great failures. It's the self-deprecation. The thing is, it's like, hey, if you're willing to go to the effort to tie a noose and hang yourself, why aren't you going to the effort to learn how to do self-acceptance? You know, you'd be a lot happier in your life if you're able to do that. Like, why? Why not? I had to learn self-acceptance as a strategy for survival. Literally. If I didn't accept myself, I mean, I totally understand, you know, people being all suicidal when they're not able to accept themselves. But for me, it was, it was, I had to accept myself in order to survive. That was it. It really was just survival. And that's how, and that's the thing I'm trying to say here, folks. Like, acceptance, especially for FE users, is insanely important. It's, it's critical. Without acceptance, like, life is meaningless to them. The thing is, though, is that they have to understand they're not going to get any external acceptance from anyone until they have that introverted internal acceptance first. And they have to spend so much time and so much effort learning how to accept themselves. You know, on top of all that, at least they're not extroverted thinkers where all they care about is, and because they, you know, their FI is like, oh, I already accept myself, but all I care about is getting people's respect. You know, thing is, respect is just as subjective as uh, acceptance, you know, that's all they care about. That's why oftentimes they try to go after the accolades of success or achievement. And they always think they can arrive. But you can't arrive. You can't achieve. You really can't. Because the only thing you could take with you when you die is your relationships that you have with other people. Right? But here's the thing, though. Like, you know, today, today is the 4th of July. Today is Independence Day. Like, you want to know true freedom? You want to know true independence in this life learn how to accept yourself seriously learn how to accept yourself i had to and i was 300 pounds miserable absolutely miserable miserable in my childhood miserable in my 20s miserable all the time what's your excuse what's your excuse why aren't you accepting yourself here I am, a very feminine type male, right? Like, basically, I was so unwanted and so unwanted by my family. Like, I, I mean, hey, I'm just an embarrassment of the family, right? You know? On top of, you know, like being sexually abused by family and then like facilitating the sexual abuse because of Stockholm Syndrome that I had towards my abusers and I'm enabling my own abusers, right? That's a thing. So what's your excuse? What's your excuse? If you're an FE user, what business do you have not accepting yourself? What a business do you have not treating yourself with respect or treating yourself with acceptance? Why don't you even like yourself? I mean, even Railgun, she struggles with this big time because she'd be like, you know, there are days I'll catch her where she doesn't even eat anything. She's taking care of everybody else, but she don't eat anything herself. And then she just falls apart. And I'm like, what the hell? Why don't you accept yourself? 
God, the self-rejection is just ridiculous. You know, at least I had introverted sensing. At least I had this, you know, need to survive, you know. But those, you know, because need to survive or need in of its own right is an introverted sensing concept. But when you look at extroverted sensors combining with extroverted feelings, which are Templar types, when you look at those types, they don't have that need to survive as much. It's more of they need this will to live. And then because of this will to live, it's hard for them to will themselves acceptance for themselves or will themselves self-acceptance. It's tough. But the reality is they got no excuse. They have no excuse. They're always, always these Templars, they, they, get so, they get so concerned about, you know, being burdens on other people. But then they, they don't even realize that, you know, being suicidal or self-harm, etc. is all about, uh, you know, they end up becoming a burden on other people. They actually have some, you know, if they actually choose to accept themselves as they are, as W. Anton teaches in his book, The Manual. Like, all of a sudden, they ain't a burden on anyone anymore. All of a sudden, they're useful. All of a sudden, they're accepted by other people. Huh. Huh. You know, you INFJs, you ESTPs, do you guys feel lonely? Because you haven't accepted yourself. You're struggling with loneliness, and I know you guys do, because you're... Soul Temple Templars, with your lust, deadly sin, and your need for intimacy more than anything, need for connectedness more than anything. What makes you think anyone's going to be want to be connected with you if you can't connect with yourself? You gotta have that self acceptance. You just have to believe, choose to believe that you actually do have value. And that ain't no fake it until you make it thing. You know. You exist. You need to be thankful for your existence. You need to be grateful for your existence because through that gratitude, that will lead you down the road of self-acceptance, which will then lead you down the road of external acceptance, which will lead you down the road to intimacy, what you're really after in this world, and you'll have it for once. You know me? For me, it's satisfaction. Because I'm a Heart Temple Crusader, and Heart Temple Crusaders are all about satisfaction. Heart Temple Crusaders, ISFJ, DNCP. We're learning about this right now in the uh, premium lectures area. csjoseph.life forward slash members. Become a journeyman, you get to watch the Deadly Sin lectures. We're laying down this foundation before we release our version of the Enneagram, which is coming. I'm going to help you guys determine your cognitive focus, which was the original purpose of what Enneagram was supposed to do. You know, but instead, we got to learn 512 different combinations within the objective personality system, you know, to figure out cognitive focus. I mean, Dave Powers is not exactly wrong. It's just not the best way to present it, in my opinion. But yeah, like, seriously, folks, you, you, you just got to realize these things. You just got to, like... Without self-acceptance, there's just, just really no point. No one's going to want you. No one's going to value you. No one's going to stick around for you. No one's, you know, like, if you're not able to reach that, then you're wasting your time. You're wasting everyone else's time, right? Like, and then, like, on top of that, like, I see that, you, you know, you decide to, like, commit suicide or, like, off yourself or whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, well, you know, that's on you because... You chose to not accept yourself because other people were not accepting you, right? You always blame others. It's all about blame, right? And they never actually blame themselves, and they should blame themselves. Because it really just comes down to choices. You've got to make that choice. It's funny, you know, Railgun even tells me, it's like, well, I can't, I need to have confidence. And I'm like, confidence is fake. Just do it. And if you do a bad job, it just means you're out of practice. Confidence has nothing to do with anything. And I'm so tired of listening to Templar types talk about confidence. Because they often base their self-acceptance off their, you know, their, their, their sense of confidence. 
Gross. Oh, it's so annoying. At least Essie parents, for example, realize how fake confidence actually is. Essie parents are at least responsible enough to understand, like, yeah, confidence don't mean much. I should just, you know, work hard at practicing, you know. Or that song you hear, that you look it up on Spotify, discipline equals freedom. You want freedom, you little NI users and your little Templarness? Guess what? You need to have self-discipline. But you can't have self-discipline unless you're going to have some aspect of self-acceptance. You know, kind of like, you know, it's what you teach the, you know, the TE users. It's like, hey, you know, if you want some respect, you got to be willing to submit. Because without submission in your life, you will never be able to show anyone else respect. And because you're incapable of showing anyone else respect, no one will respect you. You want to be respected, UTE users? Show some respect. But good luck, because most of you, especially experted thinking women, are incapable of submission in your life. You know, that's what you got to learn. You got to learn how to submit. Whereas, you know, expert feelers, you got to learn to accept yourself. You got to know that you have intrinsic value. You know, society sure sees you as having this intrinsic value. They're willing to sell you down river. They're willing to enslave you. They're willing to have you die in a battlefield for them. They're willing to do that all the time. They're willing to put you in jail and have you be like low cost or slave labor. But yeah, you definitely have value, right? Boy, you want to just kill yourself? Really? Really? Oh my God. Wake up. Do you realize how much of a hypocrite you are when you're being so suicidal? You're just this big hypocrite. Stop being a hypocrite. No point. You know, I've had it worse than most of you people. And, like, I still keep going. I learned how to accept myself. You don't have to use survival as a way to accept yourself. Maybe maybe you have to use thrival, right? Maybe it's about thrival. Also, um, heads up, um, we're having our summer coaching sale right now. And all the discounts stack uh, with the... Acolyte and Journeyman, they each have additional coaching discounts, and then you stack with the actual sales. So you can get like coaching for extremely affordable right now. Get verified. And trust me, guys, getting verified is going to get more worth it because like we're adding things to verified people. We have our own private channels on the CS Joseph Discord. Um, you should do like a link tree. The link is down below. Click it and get on the Discord server. If you're already verified, get your CS verified tag. Get in that channel because, like, we do some crazy stuff. Think about it. Wouldn't it be great if you TE users who are verified would just like to be able to ping a Discord server with verified people? Be like, okay, can all the ENTJs tell me this? Can all the ESTPs tell me this? You know, being able to, like, ask those kinds of questions to, like, people who are verified, that'd be pretty great, you know? So why not? Why not get verified so you get access to that? Not only that, the verified folk have the opportunity to participate in a lot of the research that we're doing to improve the science and also improve the accessibility of the science to the rest of the community. If you want to get in on that, get verified. Worth it. Life forward slash coaching. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Happy 4th of July. Happy Independence Day. Use your independence for self-acceptance so that others can finally accept you. I did it. You can. Later.